Hi, I'm Rick Anthony, and welcome to the Someone You Should Know podcast, the podcast that focuses on musicians, authors, and interesting people. We like to say we're making a difference one artist at a time. So sit back, have a cold one, and get ready to meet someone you should know. The Someone You Should Know podcast does its best to introduce you to great music in the local area and around the world. And this time we attack the Milwaukee music scene with today's guest, who's covered everything from Lollapalooza and South by Southwest down to shows and the little tiny bars and the little tiny shows. Will you please welcome Alan Hallis? Welcome aboard, Alan. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Alan, when did your love affair with music begin? What, when, what was it? Were you, uh, were you young, or was it uh, something that happened a little bit later? I was really young when I started listening to music and kind of grew up on, like, you know, prime MTV and VH1 days where there were music videos still in the morning <laughs> and, uh, you know, top 10 countdowns and things like that, TRL. Um, so that was, that was big for me, but then I also grew up uh, skateboarding a lot, so, okay. you know, Music and skateboarding kind of fall hand in hand. And, um, you know, watching the different videos or playing the video games at the time, you know, those things or just being out with people like you hear a variety of tons of different music. And that really kind of shaped me and and where, you know, my musical taste kind of went. And how did you get involved with actually reporting on music? So really... It all kind of goes back to I used to produce music was the, the oh, next okay. step. I, I thought I was going to play in a band and it never really kind of panned out. And then I was making uh, music for hip hop artists and stuff like that. Um, then got busy with, you know, life and, and really started reporting on music because uh, I was in college and we had a college radio show that we were able to do, uh, which inevitably became Breaking and Entering. It was it was Breaking and Entering's uh, radio show for a couple hours and we weren't great, but we did it, and we played a lot of played a lot of local music because we played our friends' music. Um, so that's really kind of what really led me into that path of ultimately being like, all right, we're gonna we're gonna write about this. Um, it was kind of the blog era of discovering music. That was what you did. You went to all these different websites to find new music. So we were gonna write about the stuff that was in our backyard. All right. So well, what, what do you think the very first article might have been? Can you, can you can you delve back to what you think you might have been the first thing that you actually got published either either on a blog or maybe in paper or whatever? The first thing I ever got published myself, actually, um, I did on on what was the precursor to breaking and entering. Mm-hmm. So it, the the story kind of goes: me and a friend were going to go to Madison to go see this band uh, called the Dangerous Summer that we were going to you know hang out with actually because he was in bands and knew them from playing shows and stuff like that. Um, my car, my 1996 Oldsmobile at the time, uh, <laughs> broke down on the off ramp, uh, headed towards Delafield, Wisconsin, which is about halfway through. Mm-hmm. My parents were not thrilled that we had to tow the car all the way back and pretty much, I don't want to say like totaled the engine, but it was, it was not a cheap fix. Mm-hmm. Um, especially, you know, being in college at that point. So there was a little bit of a, uh, uh, father son blowout, <laughs> and that led me to hanging out in my room for a little bit and, and stewing. And somehow I just kind of fell onto onto WordPress, and I was going to start writing, you know, about music. And so I said, let's talk about the stuff that's cool that's in my life. So I, our first article was about the dangerous summer. Oh, so awesome. it's still out there if you look deep enough in the archives on breaking and entering because it eventually rolled into what became breaking and entering. All right. But very all cool. thanks to a, a broken down Oldsmobile. <laughs> very cool, very cool. I always love road stories, and that's what. Anytime I have a musician on, I always ask them. You know, we do a thing called Tales from the Road. What is your most unusual road story? And you know, mm-hmm. of course, the the ones where things go perfectly. You know, that's actually kind of boring. It's the ones where. Uh, you, you plug in and all of a sudden the power goes out in the amphitheater type thing. Uh, uh, yeah. you, you get there, you realize you're at the wrong venue or the club has closed down between the time that you actually booked the thing to the time that had the date <laughs> of the event. Uh, what's the uh, music scene in Milwaukee like? What would you say is the climate of the music scene? It's very diverse. It is incredibly diverse. And I think what we do kind of with our website is we bring all of those different little pockets together. Um, just like, you know, Milwaukee is... You know, you'll find a pocket of people that are really into hip hop, like very lyrical stuff, or you'll find another pocket of like all this stuff that's happening on the east side of Milwaukee right now with these like college bands that kind of grew up in COVID and now are finally able to play clubs. And so there's a really thriving indie rock scene there. Um, You know, there's clubs, there's like electronic music is happening now here. So, I mean, it really is like depending on what neighborhood you go into, you're going to hear something completely different. 
but there's a lot of really talented artists. A lot of ethnic on- music as well, too? Yeah. Um, yeah, we have a really, you know, just diverse makeup, too. Actually, um, like, regional Mexican music is kind of picking up, mm-hmm. too. Like, there was really only one club that was, like, or one venue that was a, a major size venue that was booking those types of shows mm-hmm. in uh, Milwaukee. And then within the last year now, that's really exploded. Actually. Wonderful. That's what I thought. The Chicago's doing the same thing, too, so that's why I wanted to ask. Uh, yeah, heard, yeah, yeah, definitely. There's a lot of that. We have a lot of great world festivals here, too. Um, in the city, there's, you know, your traditional things like an Irish fest. There's an Italian fest. Mm, and yeah, like you that. want to, anytime you've got county fairs, too, you're going to wind up having a bunch of bands playing, too, as far as that goes. Yeah. Uh, the hottest act in the music scene right now in Milwaukee, who would you say would be a couple of the hot names to watch over the next year? So this kind of leads back into that that really thriving scene on the east side. All these kids that, I, I mean, they were playing house shows, and then it's really like they all turned 21, and now they can all play clubs. Um, there's a band called Diet Light that just put out a, a new album, actually, this weekend, this past weekend. And uh, they did their album release show at a pretty decent-sized club, but put on by one of the big promoters in Milwaukee, mm-hmm. and sold it out. Um, so Diet Light is definitely one to look for. There's another one that also sold out, Bug Moment. <laughs> bug um, Moment, <laughs> right? Yes, Bug Moment. They've got a kind of a, they actually kind of have like a throwback to like that turn of the millennium, like rock meets, <laughs> not hip hop, but like more angsty, like almost new metal-y kind okay. of thing going on. Mm-hmm. Um, hip hop wise, there's tons of amazing artists. Cam Will is somebody that comes to mind for me. I always am a fan of Von Alexander. But even if like you're you're more of a fan of like older school hip hop, there's like Twan Mac is he brands himself as adult contemporary hip hop. Mm-hmm. So you know, and he's on tour. He's actually touring with Arrested Development in Europe uh, this uh, in a couple months. So I mean, there's a lot. You know, depending on what your your interests are. Um, we have something for you here in Boston. Awesome. There's Very definitely good. a show to see. Very good. Know. Depends on the climate, everything. Now, you've been to South by Southwest. You've also been to Lollapalooza and such. Uh, any particular music events that kind of, it's like, this is the one that's for me. Lollapalooza is too big. South by Southwest is, is kind of a medium-sized type thing. And uh, what you, what would you say would be kind of like your, your favorite place to go to? So Lollapalooza is actually probably one of my favorites. Oh, really? Um, okay. Milwaukee has Milwaukee has. I don't know if you're familiar with Summerfest at yeah. all. Mm-hmm. Um, they they are the world's largest music festival technically because they're um, now three weekends: uh, Thursday, Friday, mm-hmm. Saturday every time. This year is going to be the 55th year of Summerfest. So while we have all those big festivals like Lollapalooza and stuff like that, Milwaukee has had that for a long time every year. So Summerfest is one of my favorites. Definitely love covering Lollapalooza um, because that was one of the first things that really made me feel like I kind of made it Mm -hmm. as, you know, a credentialed media and like because I've only gone there to cover it. I've never Mm -hmm. gone like as just a fan. Mm -hmm. And the first time I walked in, it was a it was a Thursday at like one in the afternoon. And there's, you know, thousands of kids just dancing to like this EDM party and like going as hard as we can. And uh, I was not prepared for the amount <laughs> of just massive production yeah. and sound and just the amount of kids that were, were partying like the world was going to end. This, <laughs> this, most re- this most recent Lollapalooza, I got exposed to some bands I never uh, wasn't familiar with, and a couple of them actually ended up on the podcast. So I'm really, oh, nice. ex- really excited awesome. about that. Um, what was the, the what pot, what uh, Lollapalooza did you attend? Your, your first one you attended that as, as a press person. Um, I believe the first year was 2016. 2016. Who was who was the headliner yeah. that year? Offhand, I believe the Arcade Fire was okay. uh, the last day. Yeah. So I've gone every year since. It's been great to yeah. see. I got to see the Foo Fighters the last Foos, show. Yeah, yeah. I love I love the Foo's. Yeah, that was that was that was very special to us. Last year, Green Day did a great job. Metallica did a nice mm-hmm. job also, and uh, we got exposed to Billy Strings for the first time. And yeah. uh, and uh, oh gosh, Royal Blood was another one. That I thought yeah, was, was they were, really, they were really really awesome good. too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were really good. I got to see um, Turnstile for the first time mm-hmm. uh, live. Even though they had played Milwaukee, I just missed the last time that they were there. Um, kicking myself that I did not see them at, in a smaller venue beforehand because they were one of the most impressive ones to me. And they were on a, a side stage this uh-huh. last year. You know. <laughs> All right, so we'll maybe have to get them on the podcast. I think. <laughs> Yeah. All right, real good. Uh, now, you've got a website. We've been talking about it a couple of times here. Breaking and Entering. Uh, interesting title. Very interesting title. How'd the uh, whole 
uh, name come to be, breaking and entering? Sure. It um, it goes back to that radio show actually mm-hmm. at, at Marquette. Um, so I we my the person I was doing it with in co- uh, high school. We were talking about doing a a radio show, a student radio show. Once we both got into Marquette, and we both got in, um, but we were sitting in study hall at Thomas More High School in Milwaukee, and originally we were like, "Well, we're not going to be good enough to be radio. It just wasn't going to happen." So we said, "What if we did something like a podcast?" You know, this is 2010. Um, so had we had actually stuck with podcasting, yeah, that who knows? Been Twelve we years, yeah, <laughs> thirteen years, there, yeah. pretty wild, yeah. It was a very fringe thing at the time, and you know it was way before podcasts blew up. Um, so we were like, "Well, we could do it," and then we we're like, "Well, let's do it when we start in college. We'll do a podcast." And uh, one of our friends, um, her name's Katie. She was staying at the dorms, and we said, "Well, we were both living at home and you know commuting to school. Why don't we just do it out of your dorm room?" And then she looked over at us and she said, "Well, you'll have to call it breaking and entering because that's the only way that we would let you do the show out of our dorm." And so we said, sure, we would do it. We never actually <laughs> got to do it out of her dorm room. We never did the show out of there. But um, originally, what? yeah, that was kind of the genesis of it. And, I mean, now it, it does kind of fit into an emerging music scene. There's people breaking in and, and maybe yeah. not. You know, what we do is we cover everything from that big festival level, that big Lollapalooza level down to, you know, all the all the way down to somebody making something cool in his basement. So people that literally are just forcing their way into the music scene and, and sort of breaking in. So it it, it kind of fits. That's, you know, that's a good name. It really is a good name because, you know, there's so many people that are just trying their luck at this. And, and, and that's what the whole premise of this show is. There's so mm-hmm. much great talent out there that will never get on the radio because of corporate radio the way it is nowadays. But right. there's so much talent that needs to be heard, and this is just an avenue. I mean, I don't make any money off of this. I All I do is just basically try to promote all the great talent in the local area. Yeah, you can pluck down a couple hundred dollars and see one of these big-name bands that you've followed for years, or you mm-hmm. can pay five bucks cover charge and see someone <laughs> who plays the music nearly as well and has really right. and truly put uh, a lot of effort into it. And uh, yeah. that, that's what I really love a lot. There's these cover bands in the local area, just absolutely phenomenal. Right. And let me tell you, we do sell advertising. Um, so when uh, <laughs> when you're going around pitching people on the idea of selling ads on your website and you say that it's named Breaking and Entering, mm. uh, the first few years were a little rough. <laughs> I can imagine. Yeah. I can imagine. Although people people were off put by the name. It's, a, it's also only a .NET because... Um, somebody had like a locksmith or something had breaking Breaking and entering. Com. I was I was going to say, do you get do you get any <laughs> do you, do you get any feedback from the law enforcement community about a a, a website called Breaking and Entering? Not yet, fortunately. Hopefully, enough people see that there's there's music there and there's no crimes. I think, uh, you know, there were were points where we would say like we don't endorse actual breaking and entering. <laughs> it might actually still be somewhere in our like terms of service or somewhere deep embedded in our website i don't uh, know uh, <laughs> just to be like hey we're just you know we're we're legit we're fine uh, <laughs> you know? okay very good well we've seen the traditional music scene really change where the record label involvement uh was kind of like the only way you can get you know your stuff on the radio or get your stuff played anywhere uh it's changed drastically over the last dozen years or so and uh the indie artist today now has the ability to release what they want when they want, how they want, and in the way they want it, too. It's nice for them, but it would be nice to have the backing of a record label. Uh, what are right. your thoughts on the whole thing? So my thoughts on, on a label versus indie have always kind of been, or at least in the last few years, that the label structure is kind of dead or antiquated. And you can, like you said, put out anything. You could put a video out on TikTok that goes viral, and all of a sudden you're... You know, you're everywhere. Um, but what I think labels do is that they their best strength is that they're your marketing department mm-hmm. and they're kind of your bank. Um, so that is those are the two qualities that still keep labels alive, I think, is, you know, being able to market your artists to, you know, they have that established relationship with all of the places that you want to be as an artist. Um, and they also, of course, have the money to do that now. The problem with them having the money to do that is you end up paying that on the back. Yeah, exactly. End. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So you end up paying it, not even knowing you're paying. It I want to play. I want to fly first class. I want a limo. Well, you're going to be paying for it eventually down the road. Yeah, <laughs> right. It's gonna. They're keeping that bill. They're keeping your tab on that. Um. So, 
that's kind of the benefits of it. But I know a lot of indie artists that are able to now, you know, make their own lane, maybe not be the hugest artist in the world. But there's people that I know, you know, from Milwaukee that are able to tour regularly or they're able to go out and, you know, start their own little side business of being able to, you know, based on income from music. And and they find a way to, you know, have their own little niche. And that's where they, you know, they're comfortable with. They can comfortably tour the country or, you know, live a pretty decent life on, on music. Yeah, like, It's you, all indie and all DIY stuff. You've got all these uh, YouTube and influencers, too, that uh, manage to find just a, a, a little niche. And all of a sudden, they are, they're taking off. But the thing mm-hmm. is... A lot of them are the like almost like one hit wonders. So right. uh, that that's just it. But uh, I, I've seen a lot of record labels. I've been involved with record labels for many many years myself, and it's it's hard to when you actually have some talent out there and you're trying to break them. And the biggest struggle because we used to manage uh, musicians. My late wife and I used to manage musicians. And mm. yes, we want to go to the next level. Yes, we want to get to the next level. But as soon as we get into that next level, they become very resistant about the fact that they're a, they have that fear factor of, yes, I want to get to the next level. Okay, now we're there. It's like, do I really want to do that? It's a comfort level that they have. Do you want to yeah. go ahead and play a club of 500 people and get paid maybe $500? Or do you want to play a club of 50 people, get your new music out there rather than playing covers and mm-hmm. and actually, you know, play for a record, you know, a record exec that happens to be in the room. No, I'd right. rather make the five hundred dollars. You know, <laughs> so it's... yeah, yeah. Most people will say that, and I think that. Um, but you have a good point. You never know who's in that crowd. Absolutely, absolutely. There... I, I think you know, there's people with connections, especially so in the size of market that we're in. You know, there might be somebody that has a tie to the radio or a tie to you know somebody that moved to L.A. or something like that. That is. You know, industry connected. It's not as hard to find in Milwaukee as you would think it would be, mm-hmm. uh, because the pool of you know people are of real enthusiastic people also end up being the successful people here too. Right, so. right. Now we've talked about your website. You've also got a podcast. You've got it's it's called the uh, Hustling Sideways with Jim Love, uh, and yes. this is where you uh, you take a look at side hustles that you both and your friends have come up with. Can you elaborate about the whole concept of Hustling Sideways and tell us about the show? Sure, definitely. Um, so we are a podcast that looks at side projects, uh, passion projects, side hustling, as we, you know, as it's affectionately called, of having a business outside of your nine to five job. Um, for me, breaking and entering started as a side hustle, um, and, and for for Jim, he's a motivational and a keynote speaker, so he does that on on the side of his normal nine to five job. And it's kind of about like just the things that you go through when you have a business that isn't necessarily like going to be your full time income, mm-hmm. but you have to kind of treat it like that, right? So, um, you you know, we talk about things like time management, um, when people really know that they have something that they can kind of run with, you know, finding stuff that you're really passionate about, mm-hmm. you know, whatever it may be. We've had everything from like people that do stuff on Etsy and sell, you know, arts and crafts to like wrestling promoters. So like it goes <laughs> the full gamut. And uh, Jim and I both have two kind of different circles of people that we we know. That helps. He has the corporate <laughs> crowd. I have all my musicians and weirdos. And uh, the two of us, you know, ha- I have a pretty good pool of uh, of people to pull from. So, and he actually, we both met uh, working together in college, but then going to a lot of basketball games and stuff like that. So. That's exactly what this show actually was. Um, I just retired recently, and I started yeah, really this. I, I started this. Uh, I, I've been in radio for 40 plus years, and uh, my my wife said, you know, I would mention something like, you know, I've talked to that particular celebrity, this particular celebrity, this musician's got a great story. She says, you got to write a book. And I said, no, I don't write a book. And she says, well, maybe do a podcast. This is basically the Band-Aid or the nicotine patch that keeps me from going back on the radio. Um, yeah. So so this started off as a little hobby, and uh, I'm kind of dumbfounded at where it's taken off. We we finally hit Africa this last weekend. I'm very happy about that. So we've hit every right. continent except Antarctica now. So <laughs> so who knows we'll where it's going to be heard. We'll, we'll find somebody out there. We'll yeah, send them someone the in Antarctica, please listen and please uh, sign up to the Hustling Sideways podcast as well. <laughs> yeah, there we go. We would love it. It would be great. <laughs> very good. Yeah. How, how often do you do your shows? Um, so hustling sideways, we have a guest every other week, every okay. other Monday, every other and Monday. then in weeks in between, uh, Jim and I do a shorter episode where we're talking about something going on in our own side hustles. 
So that's where we get the more kind of, I don't want to say motivational stuff, but just more like commiserating stuff, you know, like we've talked about what was our least professional moment and what was our, <laughs> you know, what we've done, like how awkward were we when we started networking, things mm-hmm. like that. So for yeah. for the record, my most, my least professional moment was having my old like joke phone voicemail uh, and having JBL speakers call me about an advertising <laughs> campaign and That's nice. they wanted to spend some serious money on and almost pulling the plug because I had uh one of those like voicemails where you're like, Hello? 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 And then no, you I can't hear you. I can't like, hear you. Oh, I'm not here. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I, not the thing I, you want to do. No. <laughs> exactly. It's like an individual who wants to apply for a job and they have some email like, you know, you know, big hot mama at uh, at yahoo.com right. type thing. You know, it's like, no, no. You know, <laughs> you got to yeah. yeah, I, I had it when I was like 15 years old or something like that. I had said it mm-hmm. and I did know that it carried over from one phone to the oh, next geez. yeah there you go to the other mm-hmm. so for years i apparently had this but i always answered my phone so i was like it was very rare that it ran into that mm-hmm. uh, yeah. but the one time that of course i didn't was the time i needed to <laughs> well then so. again nowadays nowadays we get so much spam calls you know you have you have no idea who, who's actually calling you and that's yeah. one, that's always one problem that we had that before we started doing this via zoom we would be doing phoners and our our telex would handle lines, but the thing is, it would be a call. The next thing you know, we're talking to some guy who wants to sell us, you know, like um, sun panels for our, for our roof. Yeah. You know, it's like, no, nah, we don't want to go ahead and do solar panels. Thank you, but uh, right. I, we because we were looking for someone who's supposed to be calling at this time. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes, yeah, so. yeah, I've run into that with all. I mean, I try to pick up even when it says like, uh, you know possible spam i'm just like could be anybody you know what i mean like that's kind of that's the opportunity most of the time it's spam though <laughs> <laughs> you know i i was i was getting a comedian friend of mine i said you know something i just say i had to change my name to such and such because my original name was spam risk <laughs> no one would return my calls <laughs> Hey, I mean, it must happen. It's a rough life. <laughs> <laughs> let's uh, let's get a link to all your socials here. Let's go ahead and first go to the to the website, and then also the uh, the link to um, hustling sideways. For sure. Okay, so I've done this a few times. This is breakingandentering.net is the main website. Uh, you can also find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, Twitch, Snapchat, Caffeine. Uh, we've got an e newsletter, <laughs> we've got a Patreon, all sorts of things like that. We well, are literally anywhere that you can social network, we've probably got something else. Awesome, YouTube, that is so good. YouTube. I will include those down in the show notes if you can send them to me. I'll go ahead and make sure I'll, I'll, I'll copy and paste it for you. Yeah, <laughs> awesome, um, very good, very good. Hustling yeah. Sideways, where can we find Hustling Sideways? That is also wherever you get your, um, wherever you get your podcast, we're okay. on all the platforms that way. Uh, we release the video on YouTube. Um, you can also see us on Facebook every other week when we do our guest interviews. Mm-hmm. And we have Instagram, we have Twitter, and we have TikTok there as well, too. Awesome. Very good. Very good. Any final thoughts before we close up shop for today, Alan? Yeah, definitely. Thank you so much for having me on. Um, just want to tell people to go you know, support independent music, support independent podcasters like this, um, because I think that's super beneficial. Yeah. We are in this new kind of world where anyone can create anything and find their people. So I'm really glad that, you know, you have a show like this where we can find somebody that we need to know. Yeah, my big thing, support local music. There's so much talented music out there. Give them the love. Yeah, you can plunk down $300 and see Stevie Nicks, but I think you'd rather go ahead and see some great local talent in the local area, and it only costs you a couple bucks and a couple of beers. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Real good. Definitely. Once again, my guest today is Alan Hallis of the uh, Breaking and Entering website and also the Hustling Sideways podcast. Thanks again for being a guest, pal. Thank you. Hi, this is Rick Anthony thanking you again for listening to this episode of Someone You Should Know. Now, if you're an aspiring musician or an established musician that's looking for a little exposure, I invite you to drop us a line at someone you should know podcast at gmail.com. That's someone you should know podcast at gmail.com. Also, I invite you to tell a friend about the Someone You Should Know podcast. I thank you for tuning in this time and I invite you to check us out next time on the Someone You Should Know podcast because you never know who's going to show up. Until next time, remember, God loves you and so do I.